Welcome to The Winner's Playbook with Steve and Josh. Disclaimer, the information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into account your personal circumstances. Please head to the show notes if you wish to book a free 15-minute call to discuss your personal situation. Welcome back to The Winner's Playbook. Uh, My name's Steve Sloan. I'm here with my colleague, Josh Lee. Another episode. Josh, how are we going this week? Yeah, mate, good. I was uh, busy as always, probably been one of the busiest weeks in my life. So it uh, just keeps getting busier and busier. And that's not a bad problem to have whatsoever because it just means there's plenty of people out there that need help. And yeah, I think it's a good problem to have. How about yourself, Steve? Yeah, yeah, mate. Always a, always a busy week. Sounds like not as busy as you. You you obviously like to tell me you're very busy all the time. I've well, you had, a, you had a birthday as well, Steve. So how, was, how was your birthday yesterday? It was good. Thanks, mate. Yeah, no, look, yeah. another year older, hopefully wiser. You'd probably say opposite, but but no, no, it, it was good. Bit of family time, took the kids to pizza, nice. didn't have to cook dinner. It was it was lovely. So yeah. So, no. so the birthday wasn't really about you, it was more about the, the kids, probably. Or... It was. It was. Yeah. It, that's the way birthdays roll these days, but that's cool. That's that's it's I'm a family man. That's the important thing. It's not about me anymore, mate. So it's all well, good. that's interesting because it kind of leads us into our topic. We're not really talking about family today, are we? We're not. No, 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 no. It's all about if you're single, you know, what, what do you do about money? How do you build wealth? How do you, how do you get out there? Because it's, uh, you know, you've only got one income to concentrate on and uh, in some ways it can restrict you, but in other ways it can benefit you. And, and you know, and we have look after a lot of couples. We also look after a lot of singles. So if we kick it off, mate, and, you know, in the in what you've seen in the past and what, what are some of the key items singles can focus in on to build wealth, what does that sort of picture look like, you think? Yeah, very, it's, it's obviously very interesting. We all generally, well, you start off single and then you get, end up going in a relationship. So we all sort of start at that point. But there's definitely some benefits, I think, of being you know single in terms of your wealth creation journey because there's no one to distract you. And there's only you to negotiate with. So that's quite yeah. that's quite easy. You don't have a, a, better, a better half to negotiate with. And some of what we spoke about on the last podcast was when you're, you know, you're not on the same page or you're not aligned say with your partner, that can cause massive issues in terms of trying to get the, you know, the cogs or the wheels turning in, in whatever direction you're going. So, you know, being single can definitely speed up your wealth creation journey massively because generally your, your cost of living is going to be lower as well because you're going out for dinner for one, maybe, or maybe you're not going out for, for too, too many dinners at all. And I suppose if you're really early on in your journey as well, being single, you know, if you're young and you're living at home, you really don't have that much expense whatsoever. So it does actually allow you to get a quite a good leg up, I think, on your wealth creation journey because you can just invest a lot more of your money, focus on yourself, focus on your education, you know, get better in whatever field or craft you're trying to to get better on. Because uh, I, I know for one, like I've been with now Alana for over 10 years. So, you know, we got together when we were, I think, 17, 18 years old. And, you know, that's like, it's a lot of distractions that can come with with all of that and if i wasn't in a relationship well life would be probably different but then maybe i wouldn't be as happy as i am today as well so i guess there's pros and cons with with all of all of that but it can definitely speed you up but in some respects could maybe hold you down as well because then you don't have someone that's going to hold you accountable um, to as well and maybe you don't have a you know a motivation to get up because it's it's just yourself but uh, what, what about yourself steve what's what's some of your thoughts there I think, yeah, look, I think what you touched on, it's a great opportunity if you're single to get your education all sorted and get in the position of life that you want to get into, get in the area of your career that you want to get into, you know, less responsibility, you know, whether you've got kids or just a partner, it's, it's you know, you don't have that responsibility that you've got to turn up to, it's just yourself. But yeah, as you said, in some ways, you've got to make sure you stay accountable I think that's key. If you're single, I know probably when I was single, I'd, I should have been more accountable to, yep. to some of my actions, I reckon. Yeah, especially when it came to money. I Money came and money went a bit too freely, I reckon, when I was on my own and definitely getting a partner, probably I got a, a lot more sensible, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, my, the lesson I learned was definitely, if I look back, definitely make yourself accountable as a single person and and be smart with your money. I think that's the key part. Don't Don't waste those years of, just you know, chucking it out the door type of thing, and yeah, you know, like like everything, if you can start investing sooner rather than later, get on getting on that property ladder as a, as a single person, that that only helps you once you've got that second income coming in. So if you can get on the investment journey as a, you know with one income and get used to that, well, when you get your, you know your second income from a couple, you're sort of 
you sort of know what you're doing, right? And you can yep. do, do it a lot probably easier in a way because you've got that second income coming in and you know how to do it and you're sensible. Yep. So that's probably my my key takeaways if you just can get smart with your cash early as, a, as mm. if you're on your own and then go from there. Yeah, I think to an extent, it definitely allows you to, you, you can go a way quicker rate because it's just yourself and you can take on, you know, you, you, if you want to take on risk and be aggressive with with all of what you're doing, whether that be investing or starting business, it's it probably allows you to do it better than that if you're in a, you've got a family and kids because then once yeah. you've got all of that responsibility on your shoulders, it's it's a lot harder to still keep showing up and swinging and taking out risks and if it fails and then rebuilding and, and having to do it again. So I think that kind of it's a, definitely a tick for in the single side of yeah. you know if you're trying to build business or be really aggressive on your wealth creation journey, it's a lot easier to do when you're single. But then I guess you got to think about like do you want to be single for the rest of your life? And I, I have clients that are actually like that and don't actually want to be with someone. But if you've obviously got plans to maybe you do want to have a family in five or 10 years and, and you are single at this point in time. So maybe then you look at the next five or 10 years as, as the period where you have to go hard and, and go as hard as you possibly can to, to set yourself up for when you then do have a family, you've got all of those responsibilities. Not that I'm talking because I have kids because I don't, but of course you do, Steve. And I, but I do work with a lot of clients that obviously have kids and, and life obviously changes changes once you have kids doesn't it steve it does mate it definitely does yeah 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 it's funny you just say that because i, I look back at when i started link and i was actually single when i started yep. link i had a, a, a long-term girlfriend before that and i reckon if i was with her funnily enough i don't think i would have taken the mm. risk of the punt that i did to be honest yep. and i broke up with her after a number of years and then i had this gap and 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 that may have encouraged me even more to just go out there and give it a red hot crack on my own with, with the business. So, mm. and then I met him probably a year after starting Link, or maybe just mm. short of a year. So, that 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 that's funny you say that because it, it probably it, it definitely allowed me to go right. You know what? I've got no other responsibilities here. I can just go for it. Yeah. I remember I, I was like starting work at four a.m. Yeah, because I could. Right, there's no one to wake up to, and I just thought, you know what, I might as well just put all my energy into the business. So, I oh, was probably a prime example of that exact philosophy of, you know, mm. when you're single, you can really just give it a red hot crack, and doesn't you got no other issues yeah. to think about, really. So, yeah, well, it's not, it's not, it's definitely not easy. And even if I think of my own situation, you know, Lana and I've been together for say ten years. If if I was working like I am now, back when we met. We probably wouldn't be together because she would have been like, I'm not signing up for this. I don't want to stick around <laughs> for, all, for all of you know how hard you're working <laughs> and what you're doing. So I get like I think it totally allows you to go at a at a at a quicker rate. But you know, luckily I sort of had Lana a lot earlier than all of me getting into what I am now and and now she's a part of the journey, so to speak. So you're uh, saying but, that she probably would have just not wanted to be with you, mate, if you, you know. Well, maybe, maybe she hadn't bought into all of what I told her we were going to do for the future and she would have seen me working too hard and just been like, oh, this is not not for me. So, I don't know. But yeah. it, it like <laughs> totally allows you to go, you know, at a when, when you're single, like you can totally go at a, a way, you know, harder rate. Unless you're in a, a situation where I do see some odd couples where they're actually both incredibly driven and actually both on the same page. And yeah, they both get out there and grind and grind and hustle. But I think that's a pretty rare situation to see. Normally yeah. there's normally one in the couple that generally is doing much more of that. And the other one might be more looking after the family or other responsibilities in terms of the overall relationship. But I guess if we're just focusing then on, yeah, you are a single, what are some of the like major disadvantages that you see? If we've talked about a lot of the positive, what, what are some yeah. disadvantages that might, there might be? Um, disadvantages, I suppose, are probably less uh, servicing when it comes to getting mortgages. So I think that's a yeah. big one, and especially the size of the bloody mortgages these days and the, yeah. how expensive it is to buy a bloody house. So you sort of need the dual incomes to get the mortgage across the line. So if, if you've got a goal to buy a house and you want to buy it in a certain area like Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane or whatever it may be, it's, it's getting really difficult if you don't have that second income. So that that's probably the biggest disadvantage i'm seeing secondly yeah that, that's probably the main driver really you know I, I i don't there's not like as long as you're disciplined know what you're doing you know you've got the you got your head on regarding education you you, you you're driven i yeah. don't see a huge amount of disadvantages to be honest with you in, in finances as long as you you sort of know what you're doing you've got the right advice and you you're going the right direction have it have it yourself mate 
Yeah, I guess like this from the financial perspective is, you know, and what, what we'll talk about is, you know, what are some of those disadvantages in terms of like taxation and and things like that, but it, it can actually limit some of the available strategies for you when you, you know, you actually are single, you can't benefit from some things like family trusts and, oh, you, well, you can still benefit from them, but not to the extent when you have yeah, a partner and kids to, yeah. to send distributions off to, but I guess yeah. there's another uh, aspect to look at it from is not just from the financial side of things, like, you know, if you're going at it all on your own and you're working incredibly hard and you're always working, you know, who do you have to enjoy it with as well? Yeah, so, right, you know, who yeah. are you going to go on holidays with? And, you know, that and that, that's another aspect that has to be weighed up. And I suppose that's what you need to then ultimately think about is you're building up, say, maybe all of this material wealth and and successful from that the respect. But then what are you doing it all for in the end? Like, what, what are you actually doing it for? Like, are you just getting more dollars in the bank year after year and, and then are you going to enjoy that or do you want to enjoy right. with someone else and maybe and maybe start a family and, and that, that was a big part of my motivation initially of why i even got into finance and and you know building wealth and investing at a at an early age is because i had that motivation of not growing up around much money mm-hmm. and not wanting that for my life and then you know kids and grandkids and then you, you sort of hear that term intergenerational wealth thrown around uh, a bit where it's like you know everything that you're doing is not really for you it's actually for those you know coming after you like your kids your grandkids and and so on and that's what really appeals to me so i guess that's the part that you need to think about well if you are single it it can be a bit of a lonely journey as well from from that respect so that's definitely something to to think about but i guess if we then start getting into again some of those disadvantages from that finance financial point what about with the trust steve Have, have you ever seen many singles using say family trust for any material benefit or what, what's what are what's the you know the sort of downside there yeah look not not a lot because the typical setup with a family trust is you've got your husband and wife attached as beneficiaries a couple of kids as beneficiaries can't send them much money but over time they, they become adults and they, they'll become beneficiaries full beneficiaries as well so family trust definitely kicking the gear a lot easier and better with a bigger family unit i suppose it yeah. can work, as you said, you know, you can attach bucket companies to trust and that, that can work if you're on high incomes, but it's just not very common, to be honest. So, yeah, it does limit you from from that perspective. But I think yeah, it's probably about, as you discussed, the, more the lifestyle stuff and mm. what you're doing it for. And, you know, I see uh, a lot of people with lots of money and when they're in that position where they've got lots of money, it isn't about really them anymore they're doing it for their family i don't think i've met anyone with that's very wealthy that really sit there and go i've got to i've got to make more money for myself because the drive sort of evaporates right because they've, they've made all the money and what's an extra million bucks in the bank to be honest it doesn't really change their life yeah. so then it's about okay so who am i doing it for and absolutely like you know i suppose i know some people that like to have expensive holidays and that's their driver mm-hmm. but really the, the the passion about making more money for themselves probably dwindles once you've got a certain level of money in the bank and then it is about doing it for your family setting them up setting the future generations up and and that really becomes your driver so that's probably the missing part for the singles Mm. i think because and i i know this firsthand because my sister um go uh, is is single and, and and she's actually quite wealthy but she doesn't have that the the family support so you know she, i think yep. my kids would probably come into the picture to be honest with you yep. so yeah it's an interesting concept and it does become about lifestyle and i think that actually changes our conversation with singles to be honest i have a different conversation in my meetings with single people than than couples because you're aware of that fact and there's there's a not a generation to pass it on to or mm. that that drive is not there because there is not no one there so you've got to really open up the conversation about okay what are we doing this for what is your key driver and that is yeah. a separate conversation to what i have with couples they may want to do charity pass it on to charity they may want to you know what we've got to really find out what that drive is that we're yeah. trying to target with a single so it does become a different conversation yeah and i don't think it's as simple as saying if you're single you can't benefit from a family trust and again it's we're calling it a family trust but it's really a discretionary trust is the the actual technical name for it so you don't need to have a family to have a family trust i think it's something to to think about there but again it's about like you said it's about actually thinking about what you want out of life and although you might be single and you're not even thinking right now of having any family or kids but you know you might want it at a later date 10 or 15 years down the line like I've had situations where I've had clients in a situation where they they they're thinking really long term 
kids are not even close. They're not in a, a you know a stable relationship right now. Like they're just getting out there, they're sort of hustling and grinding and and doing what they do. But you could still consider using a family trust if you are trying to actually build wealth for the longer term. Because although you may not get a, I suppose, a real near term tax benefit, like you can get, you can still send distributions off to other beneficiaries, like other family members and and things like that. But it gets a little bit more complex when it's not sort of that, that close immediate family members, you, you, you need touched on like the bucket company sending distributions off there and paying a, a cap tax rate of 30%. But ultimately, the money has to get out of there eventually. So there's not major tax benefits from that respect. But if you are thinking really 10, 15 years down, down the line, and you're earning really good money, possibly building up wealth in a trust of which you are not going to get any initial sort of tax saving from. But then maybe in future when you're going to have a you know husband or wife and, and kids, because you're going to start to settle down in 10 or 15 years time or whatever it may be, if you've actually accumulated up a lot of your wealth through a trust, you're then going to get a major benefit of then actually having a lot of your wealth built up in a trust as well. So I guess it just really circles back to you would only be maybe considering that is if you're really certain adamant that you knew that you were going to have a family in future, or if you're just going to be single for the rest of your life, then it's not going to really give you any sort of uh, benefits whatsoever. But yeah, from, from a trust perspective, I never look at it from a, a tax saving of one year. I'm always thinking about, you know, 10 and and 20 years down the line. And even in my own personal situation, like I'm looking at buying a property in a trust as we speak, it's not a real immediate tax saving I'm looking at. I'm actually looking at, say, 10 to 20 years and then holding that asset and how that's going to be more beneficial uh, for my situation. So I think, yeah, you just got to think a lot more deeper uh, around some of that and, and think a lot more forwards into the future because some of those strategies that maybe aren't relevant for a couple, maybe they are, they are actually, in fact, relevant to you now if you take the view that you're going to get into a relationship sort of down the line. But what about some other things then for, say, single, Steve, in terms of protecting themselves, building wealth for the future? You know, are there types of insurances that might be more relevant for, for someone that is single? Any other particular types of investments or any other vehicles that, you know, could be considered from a tax perspective? Yeah, so when it comes to insurance, definitely protecting your income is key. So, you, you know, you've got four different types of insurances, life insurance, total permanent disability, trauma insurance, and income protection. Absolutely, income protection is a key part there because you've got to protect your wage. Yeah. Because if you're the one that's got to pay the bills and something happens to you, or well, you're in trouble, right? So clearly that's got to be your focus. But, yeah, maybe with some trauma cover as well and, and disability cover, but it's all about you. Right, it's not about protecting anyone else. So that's yep. your key part. Make sure that's all set up correctly, whether it's in your own name or if it's in your super fund. Yep. Look other structures. You know, you've got growth bonds and investment bonds that are quite healthy. And if you want to build wealth and create an income stream for yourself and look after number one and have a passive income coming in, then probably start looking at growth bonds, investment bonds, and the like as as a, as a good way to build wealth through that. If you've got a mm. ten year view to to build wealth, I think that's probably your go to. But yeah, I think. Definitely getting some good advice here. I think if you get set up correctly as a as a, a single person, if you're not sure what to do, then getting some good advice off a financial advisor, making sure you set up you know, for yourself is is the the next step for for anyone listening out there. Yeah, because I think that's obviously where it can then be difficult because you don't actually have anyone to really bounce off, you know, with mm -hmm. what you're doing. You don't really have anyone to throw those ideas around with. And that's where, yeah, possibly having an advisor or someone that you trust or someone that's maybe been and done what you're trying to achieve, yeah. having that person there as a bit of a soundboard to give you that objective opinion on your situation. I think that's a great tip. And yeah, I think from an insurance perspective, of course, you know, life insurance probably generally not going to be relevant for someone's situation if they're single. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't hold life insurance. Like I've had clients that want to leave money, say, to their mother who's, you know, uh -huh. single and, and they're just, there, like you say, a young guy or, or whatever it may be. And he, you know, I've had one guy that just wanted to make sure that his mum would be looked after if something ever happened to him because he didn't really have that much wealth at that point in time. So he took out a life insurance policy because he wants to leave that to his mum if something happens. So there, there's definitely no one size, you know, fits all approach to all of this. Although yeah. I have many single clients that life insurance is really not relevant to them because they've got no kids. There's no one that they're going to burden if they sort of passed away. And even if they have debt, usually they're going to have assets on the other side of the equation, which could just be sold and would clear off all of that debt. So yeah, I think, I think a key message there is there's definitely – yeah, just no one size fits all here. And although there are things that you can't really benefit from as a single, if you are taking a view over the longer term and all things that might be relevant more to couples, if you're going to go down that way, then you probably want to start thinking, I think, about that now and planning about that for the future. Would you agree, Steve? No, I agree. I agree, mate. And yeah, absolutely. Just having that sounding board, I think, is is the way. If it's, if it's not an advisor, then someone that 
has been there, done that. I think it's uh, super, super important. Agree, Steve. Well, uh, I always enjoy our short chats on, on on these days. So that's all we've got time for today, guys. And as always, I uh, hope if you are getting value from what we are talking about here, please do give us a follow on all of the socials. Give us five stars, Spotify and Apple, because it helps us out a lot. And please uh, do feel free to, as always, if you want to reach out and have a personal chat about your situation, you can go onto the LinkWealth website, uh, take a pick of your advisors and book through for an initial chat, of which we can actually talk about your situation and whether or not it's even relevant for for you in getting any advice whatsoever. So Steve, any just final parting words before we finish up? No, mate, it, it's definitely some advantages to being single, that's for sure. So just focus on that and uh, yeah, away you go. See you in the next one. See you, mate. Bye. Cheers.